up, y'all? It's DMC to K-I-N-G. I'm going to say this once. I ain't going to say it again. DMC and the place to be and the place for you to be is right here with Fred Wright. Tales from the pen. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Salute, people. We're back. Fred White, Tales from the pen. If you're new to the channel, go down and hit the subscribe button. Click the bell notification and make sure the bell is shaded in. This way, anytime I put up a video, you will know about it. So for those who may have just stumbled upon my channel, my name is Fred White. I'm from Queens. I've done almost 16 years of my life in the penitentiary. I went to prison as a teenager and I grew up in there. And I tell my stories in a non-glorification kind of way. There's nothing good about prison. So many people come home from prison through their channels and want to, you know I me, mean, and want to just tell gory and war stories and gangster stories. They're not telling you the truth. They're not telling you the truth of the emotional and mental aspect of the penitentiary. So that's what I aim to do. I aim to tell these stories so that these kids understand that the penitentiary is not a fucking game. There's nothing to glorify about the penitentiary. That shit is horrible. That shit is, is disgusting. There's nothing good about it. Only thing that does come out of it sometimes is a little camaraderie. You know what I mean? You know, you build some bonds with some good people. That's about it. So, that's what my channel is based on. I do this in a non-glorification kind of way. I do it for the kids. So today, we're going to continue with our Save a Motherfucker series. And we're going to mosey on up to this little medium. In the 90s. Now, D... D came through to my jail. We're just using letters and things. Now D came to my jail. Now I recognize D. I knew D was from around my way. He's a little bit older though, but I also remember D used to hang out with like my older brother Mike. Like I knew they knew each other. You know, lived a few blocks away. My, my brother lived with brother Mike. Everybody thinks we're brother, we just say we're brother. He lived a few blocks away, so he, he knew him. And I knew that. So when I seen him, I was like, oh shit. So I had my man Mike, yo, you know your boy's here, blah, blah, blah. He was like, yo, look out for him or whatever. All right, so I see him in a mess up. What up? So, you know, we start vibing. He had just got to the jail. And he, he went to one of the, some house or whatever. So I was like, all right, yo, I'm going to pull you with me. I'm going to pull you to my house. You know what I'm saying? I would just go. I, I was in that house a long time. That's how it goes. I go to police. Yo. Yeah. Here's his name. Here's his number. Yo, there's a, you know, there's somebody leaving or there's two beds in the back or whatever. I'd be like, yo, go pull my man from C1 or A1, whatever it was. Yo, pull him over here. And when you get the steady police, right, in certain spots, it may sound weird, but you become I right with them. Like, they know who you are. They're there every fucking day. They know who you are. They know what you're about. They know, you know what I mean? So I was like, yo, get my man over here. Right, boom. I pulled D. So I pulled D to my house. But I had heard rumblings a little before that about D. You know what I'm saying? Like, D was a cool, you know, D was a cool, smooth dude. But you could tell that jail wasn't for him. I think he was in jail for armed robbery, running around with guns. You know, he said he didn't do it. It is what it is, I don't know. But I'm just saying, you know, having a gun in the street and having a gun in prison is two different worlds. I'm about to explain it to you. So I heard some rumblings that dudes that came with him, he came from Green Haven, and the dudes that came with, literally with him were the same dudes that were pretty much like extorting him in Green Haven. Like he would get cigarettes and he, yo, let me get cigarettes. You know, he'd give dudes cartons of cigarettes and shit like that. You know what I mean? More or less like, all right, all right, here type shit. You know what I mean? So like a semi-friendly extortion-ish type thing. And I knew this. And then the thing is that the sad part is that when he was leaving his tormentors in Green Haven, they're all on the bus with him going to the same spot he's going to. Crazy. That's how the life, that's how life works. So they came to the jail, you know what I mean? You know, kid born. 
He was from Brooklyn. Now, I was already set in the spot, right? You know, I had a little team with me. You know, my man Giz. That's the thing too. A lot of people were scared of Giz. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna hold you. Like it wasn't like it was like a lot of people were scared of Giz. Like Giz was wild. Shout out to Giz. Shout out to Jamaica, Portland, Jamaica. You know what I mean? My boy doing his thing. Love you, bro. Uh. So you know, it was me. Like Giz was like. You know what I mean? And Giz was my right hand man there. Like Giz was my right hand man there. Giz, you know what I mean? That's just the way it was. Me and Giz was like this. You know what I mean? So, Giz knew born. You know what I'm saying? He was telling me, like, yo, you know, he's, he's like this, he's like that. He, you know what I mean? He wow. So, I'm like, all right, you know, it is what it is. You know, we play ball together and shit, jumping motherfucker. So, he still came with that Greenhaven shit for D. He still was trying to like push up on D. You know what I'm saying? So one day I seen D give him cigarettes or whatever. I came. I was like, yo, what's going on with you and you and that dude? You and more. I already knew something a little bit because he went, you know, he starts telling me they was always trying to get at him and shit like that. And he, you know, he would give him cigarettes to, you know, basically leave him alone. So that didn't really sit tight with me. You know what I'm saying? Like. Like, if I'm fucking with you, you know what I'm saying? Like, it can't really, that's not, that's not an option. You know what I mean? But D was like a quiet dude. D was like the type, like, you ask him a question and he'll take like, he'll, look, you say like, yo. But but if you say it in like an aggressive way, like you could be like, yo, when's your birthday? He may be like, oh, June 16th. But if you're like, yo, man, when's your birthday? He gonna be like, uh, uh, and, because of that, we called him Stuck D. You know what I'm saying? We called him Stuck D. You know what I'm saying? Like he was just stuck for a minute before he'd answer the question. You know what I mean? But the thing about Stuck D is don't get it wrong. Fucking brilliant. Fucking chess fucking master. He came home. He got his master's degree. He's doing great in life. Shout out to him. He came home and got his mask. There was nothing stuck about him. It's just nerves sometimes for him. So we called him. Even on the football field, you throw him the ball. He'd be open and get just butterfingers. I love D. That's my boy. But we called him Stuck D. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So one day, a couple of dudes came into my house, into the house. You know what I'm saying? But dudes wasn't there or whatever. Dudes walked in like they were part of that house too. It was like the police, he ain't know nothing. He was sitting in the, in his little office. You could like come and go. Like you could go in and out of houses. Like shit was crazy over there. So these two, they came in the house like they, they lived there. And they went right to D's cube and took his tapes. <clears throat> and cigarettes or whatever. And walked out the crib. I wasn't there or whatever, you know. So I came back, we came back. And D's shit was missing. And then dude just, you know, put the bug in my ear who it was. So, I went and got, because he had like two of my tapes, I told you. He had like two of my tapes. One of them was like Jodeci. I remember that. You can't keep my Jodeci tape. Oh, baby, won't you stay? Well, you can't take that whole album? Nah, 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 nah. So I went and got that, you know what I'm saying? Me and Giz, whatever, yo, that's my man shit. You rob dude, that's cool, but X, Y, and Z is mine. Got, you know, got my shit back. Love you, Giz. Got my shit back. Now, he's seen that I had the Jodeci tape back. He's like, yo. I'm like, listen, man. We called him into the kitchen. Me, Giz, and Kev. Shout out to Kev. I love Kev. Kev is a whole other story, too, man. Kev, another see dudes that come home and do good. I love it. I don't really mention Kev too much. I don't really talk about Kev too much. Kev is home, went back to school, and became a principal. Say what? Anything is possible. Kev, that was with me, three, four years, whatever he was. Kev, home, went to school, graduated St. John's. He is a principal. Shh. Anyway. Right. You can do it. Anything is fucking possible. Anything is possible, even when you had obstacles in your way. You can get over them. 
if you want to. Too many people make excuses when they see that small obstacle, like, oh, I can't even, I can't get over that wall without even trying. Makes me sick. Shout out to you, Kev. Um, so we, we put D in the kitchen. I ain't like born. He had a big mouth anyway. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I actually got into it with, with Bourne maybe a couple months later and I told him to suck my... Yeah, we went behind the house, pulled guns out. It was crazy. That's a whole other story. Another another incident where Giz was there. Yo, so... Anyway, let's get back to the story. I pulled D in the kitchen. You guys know I get sidetracked. That's the ADD. I pulled D in the kitchen. Me, Giz, Kev couple other dudes, maybe Munch. Yo, give him the knife. Here you go. He's, I'm like, you know who did it. We know who did it. You, you know going to that. Your boy was in another house, so it couldn't have happened like that night. He wasn't in the house with us. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, here. You know what I mean? Here's the knife. I gave him a brolic knife. And he didn't even want to touch it. He was like, I don't want it. I don't want it. I want to go home. He looked me right in my eyes. He said, I don't want it, guys. I, I just want to go home. He only had like a year or two left. And I understand that, man. I understand. I respected it. You know why I respected it? Because D never act like he was fucking gangster. D never act like he was a tough guy. D never act like if this happens, I'm going to stab somebody. He never did that. He wasn't like that. These dudes were just bullies, man. These dudes were just bullies. You know what I mean? And like I said, you know what I mean? When I stepped up, it, we, you know what I mean? It was a whole different thing. But that's a whole other story. Shout out to D. Not everybody has it in them. Not everybody has, are you hear me listening kids? My guy was in jail for running around with his gun, going crazy. But when it got time to get in there to get a, a different story, not everybody's built like that. Not everybody's built like that. You know how they say some people not built for jail? I don't know who is, I'm not either, but you got to adapt. When I first went in, I definitely wasn't. My first year and eight, nine months, like, I took lumps until I realized what was going on and what it took to survive. Like, oh, this is what I got to do. Oh, okay. That took, it took some time though. It wasn't easy, but you got to adjust. And he wasn't able to adjust. He just wanted to go home and I respect that and I understand that and shout out to him because he ended up going home, like I said, got his master's degree and is a social worker and helps people. Shout out to D. Shout out to D. But like I said, not everybody's built like that, kids. Are you listening? I gave him a knife to go stab somebody else. What if he would have stabbed him in his neck and killed him because of a few takes? Now, to, you, to us, we're shaking our head, that's stony, but in prison, you can't let nobody take nothing from you, man. In prison, sometimes it is a life and death situation. If you let them do that, they're gonna keep doing that and it's gonna get worse. But these are situations that you put yourself in when you're running around acting like you a fucking gangster in the streets. Kids, as you listening, this is the type of shit that happens. You get preyed on. Now, now, a lot of you guys may not have been to jail and say, I'll go to jail. I'm going to stab the biggest guy. I'm going to, man, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. You've been watching too many fucking movies. You've been watching. You know what it takes to actually stab somebody? That's another thing. People, I would just go in there and stab them. Do you know what it takes? The nerves to know that you're about to come out your cell and the adrenaline is flowing and you're about to stab somebody? and your heart is bracing, and your hands is shaking, and this cell is about to crack and it's about to go down, that takes a different mentality. You guys can say what you want until you've been in that situation. You guys could have said, I would have took that knife from you, Fred, and I would have went and put that work in. Uh, some people may have. 
But you know how hard it is to actually take something and plunge it into somebody or cut somebody's fucking face off? Man, it's not easy, man. The build up to it, the anxiety to it. You know what I mean? I've never seen a knife fight where dudes are standing there and like this. Nah, because your adrenaline's falling. You just. Kids, is this how you want to live your life? Is this how you want to live your life? Worried about people robbing you? Worried about having to stab people? Worried about all this craziness? No, it's not what you want to do. It's not what you want to do. You want to stay in school. You want to get a job. You want to be productive. You want to be a civilian. I love being a civilian. I love being free. I love being able to breathe this fresh air. I love to hear the trains and the police go by. I love this shit. It's freedom. Stay free. Kids, stay in school. People, you know the motto. Experience is the greatest teacher, but somebody else's experience could be just as valuable if you pay attention and listen. On that note, people, Fred White, signing off.